Hey everyone, it's Daniel from VoiceFlow. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to embed a usable Google map inside of your VoiceFlow assistant, just like this. So if I go ahead and search for Thai restaurant downtown LA, this is actually gonna search for a Thai restaurant in downtown Los Angeles and render a Google map just like this. So you can see it fully embeds the Google map. I can go ahead and move it around, zoom in, zoom out, uh, turn it to satellite mode, anything I can do with an app, a map, and this is fully dynamic. So if I say, find a good BBQ restaurant, it'll be able to render a new map showing exactly that. So without further ado, let's hop into VoiceFlow and show you how I've set this all up. We've got a sample project that I was building out uh, that's just kind of an AI travel assistant generator. And so we're gonna create a new topic here called find restaurant. And this is where we're gonna start to build out our function. So I'll start off by creating a new intent uh, that'll let a user actually trigger this. So find a restaurant and let's just say find restaurant. And now that I've got that, we're going to start off with the basics. So to render an embedded Google Maps inside of VoiceFlow, it's actually pretty simple. You just need the text step. Now in VoiceFlow, the text step itself is actually uh, built to support Markdown. Now Markdown is what you use for all sorts of formatting, headers, bullet points, bolded letters. But you can also embed videos, photos, audio, and images, and kind of uh, iframes itself within a text step. So if I go over here to our Google Maps documentation, and I go over to their embedding APIs or embedded map, you'll see here that you can actually get the entire URL. And all you need to do is just straight up copy this into a text step in VoiceFlow and you will have your iframe. Quick note that we've made an update to VoiceFlow and now when you add in your iframe to a text step, it will look like this. So it is blank, but this does actually render on the front end in the chat widget. And we'll show you how to do that a bit later on. But if you see it look a little bit different throughout this video, don't worry your text step should actually just be blank if you've got the iframe in there and you can test that it works when you actually deploy to WebChat. And now we're gonna go through and explain what are all the different things you need to actually render this map. So to start off, the way I found this was through the Google Cloud Console API section. So if you go to Google Cloud, they have a whole list of APIs that are open for all of the services that you can use. So your beginning may look like this. We wanna go over here to APIs services and to library. And this gives you access to all of the different APIs that they have, whether that's Google Calendar, Google Drive, YouTube, etc. So we want to go to Maps. And to actually build out this experience, there's going to be two things that we want. The first one is the Places API. This lets us take a text string, so something like find a good barbecue restaurant downtown LA, and actually return a location that matches that text string. Then the next one we want to use is the Embed Maps API here which is what I showed you before, which actually shows us how to embed a map um, in an iframe. So we've already done the maps embed one. Let's go ahead and start with the places API and I'll walk through how you can do this. So over here in VoiceFlow, we wanna create a small flow that lets a user actually uh, put in a restaurant that they're looking for. So I'll start off here by taking a text step and saying something like, absolutely, how can I help you with that? What kind of restaurant are you looking for? So once I've done that, and we'll call this the intro or get restaurant. Next up, we want to take out a capture step. We're going to drag it underneath here. And all we want to do is just, we're going to save the entire thing. So whatever user said, we're just going to save it into this variable called last utterance. So in VoiceFlow here, if I press play, and I go ahead and I pull out the sidebar here, this shows me all the variables. So if I do something like find a good BBQ restaurant downtown LA, you'll see that it actually saved it in this last utterance variable. So this is gonna be really useful for you to come back to as you're debugging, but let's continue building. So now that I've got the actual location, now I wanna make an API call to Google Maps to actually get that location. So on the Cloud Console, we're gonna to go to uh, the, the Places API, and we're just gonna open up their documentation here. And so this is gonna open up the API docs for the places API. And what we want to do is we're going to use text search. So there's a ton of stuff like this. This API is very powerful. And if you go under, you can see that there's a couple different ways to use this. The one that we're really interested in is text search. And this basically allows you to submit a string like spicy vegetarian food in Australia or fine dining seafood in California. And then it'll actually return multiple addresses that match that, including a bunch of information like reviews and more. And so we're going to learn how to use this here. So let's go to text search. You can hear, see here that uh, all we need to do is actually make a post request to this API address. And it actually gives me everything I need down here to make the call. 
So I've got the headers over here. I've got the information of like how it works. And then I've also got the body, which is really simple. You just pass over the text query. So let's go ahead and copy this. And we'll go back into voice tool here, or drag on API step, link these up together, and then put in our post request. And you wanna make sure that you change the post so you have all the necessary items. Now next up, we're gonna start filling out our headers and our body. For headers, if we go back to the docs, you can see here that all the headers are kind of shown with an H, right? So content type is application based on, Google API key, and then the field mask. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just put these in. So now the, the headers are both in here. So we got content type and field mask. And we just wanna go ahead and copy these. So we want the application JSON here. And then for field mask, we're gonna do this a bit later, but you can see here that it's got a bunch of information. It just lets you limit what's actually returned by the API. For now, we're gonna leave this blank and come back to it in a bit. Next up, we actually need our API key here. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this xgoog slash API key and make a new header for this as well. Cool. So now we've got all three headers that we need. The next thing we need is our API key. And so to get that, you wanna to go to over here, use API keys, and it'll take you through the credentials page, which will set up your API key for you. I've already got mine, and so I'm gonna show you how you can set it up as a variable in VoiceFlow. So rather than put the API key right here, we're actually gonna have it set up as a variable. And so you see, I've got one here called the maps API key, but if you don't have one, you just create one called maps API key by doing this. So I can do like API key, just hit plus, and it'll create the variable. And then once I've got this set, what this is gonna do is if I set this variable somewhere else in the flow, it'll just inject it here. And so it's best practice because I wanna set all my variables like right at the beginning, all of my keys, but I'll just go ahead and do it right here. So I'll say maps API key, I'll select maps API key. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and put in the API key that I've got in here. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that it's between brackets because it's gonna be a string. So you wanna have one quotation underneath. So my API key is now in here. And so it'll be loaded automatically into this API call when I actually go and make a request. So to start off, we're just gonna put a star here because what this is gonna do is in the API docs, when you look at the field mask um, over here, uh, it actually shows that I can just put a star to retrieve all fields but it's, we're gonna use this a bit later to actually grab specific fields. But I wanna run an API request first and see what this does. Next thing is the body. And so we wanna click raw here, it might be form data, go raw. And in the API documentation, um, right at the top here, you can see that this is the actual body that's used. So it's text query, spicy vegetarian food, Sydney, Australia. And there's a bunch of other parameters that you can add to it, that's the main one. Uh, I've also added one called max result count that's gonna limit this to one. But let's just do it all at first to see what this looks like. Great. So I hit test send request. It's gonna make me fill in the variables that I have. So I wanna put in my last utterance. So I'm gonna say Thai restaurant downtown LA. And then I wanna put in my API key here. Great. So you can see that it made the call and the call was successful. So this is what it should look like. Based on my query, it's gonna return a bunch of different places. So you can see here that it's got some Thai place. It's got an ID, phone number, and a bunch of other information. If you scroll down, you've also got reviews that come with it, photos, and more. And the more you go down, you'll see that there's actually a bunch of different places that are returned here. So super, super powerful for you to be able to use to figure out a place. Now, I don't want all of this information. I'm gonna to wanna to limit this down. And so what I'll do instead is back in the API documentation, there are different limits that you can put on this. And so here, so I can actually add something called max result count, just like this, and then just indicate the number of results that I want between one and 20. So what I'm gonna do is I will just go ahead and copy over this. So max result count. So I'll put a comma and then I'll go max result count colon one. So let's go ahead and call this again. And great, you can see that it worked and this time it just returned one location, which is perfect because this is really all I want. Now, you'll notice that in the maps uh, embed API that we've got here, we need the API key, which is totally fine, and then we need parameters. So what we're gonna do is, rather than have the URL be in this here, I'm gonna make the URL a variable and we're gonna modify it up here based on what's coming up from this API call. So let's go ahead and delete this, and instead of the URL, we're gonna have a variable called URL, and then I'm gonna do the same thing here now where I set the variable on top, and we're gonna say create URL, go to URL, 
And now we're going to go ahead and actually generate the URL that's going to render in this iframe. And so going back to the Maps API over here, this is the URL that I want. But you'll see that there's two different variables in it. So there's map mode, there's API key, and there's parameters. So for map mode, we're just going to return place because we want to return a specific one. But you can see that this shows a bunch of other ones, right? Like search shows just results across a region. So we're going to start off with place. And so in our URL here, we're going to say map mode is just place. So this is going to be place, question mark. Now we want our API key. So you remember that we've already got this here. So we're going to say maps API key and now our parameters. So let's go search for how we actually find the location. So if we scroll down a bit, awesome. So we can see that parameter Q, like in this example here, it's like Q equals Eiffel Tower Paris. So Q is the defining where the map marker is and it supports a bunch of stuff, but it also supports a place ID. So we saw that a place ID was returned by the maps API that we used. So let's go ahead and click that and see how to use it. And cool. So all we need to do is basically just have it be Q equals place ID. And then that's where uh, we're going to put our actual place ID. So let's go create another variable here called place ID. And we're going to fill this from the API call. Now, a couple things when you're setting a URL like this inside of a set step, it's important to know, like if, if you do a little bit of, if you know a little bit of coding, you'll know that if I try to render this, it's not going to fill the variables. It's actually just going to say maps API key and place ID. So what I want to do is I want to take quotes around the first part quotes around this string here. And we're going to use an expression to append the variables here. So we're just going to say plus. So it's going to be like this part of the URL plus the variable, and then plus this string and then plus this next variable. Oops, yeah, just plus base ID. Perfect. So now this should work. And this should actually render the URL. And again, it's just basically we're just appending, right? So we're appending this string to the variable for the maps API key, to this string, to the variable for the place ID. So that will create the, the URL that we need and it's gonna inject it here. So let's just link these up. And now what we wanna do is we want to actually capture the place ID from the API call and that way we can actually render it in the URL. If I send the request here, you'll see that it's over here. This is the ID that I want. So it's places.id, but again, like this is expecting multiple places, even though we limited it to one. And so I want to specify in my URL that it's going to be the first location or the first block of text to look at. So the way API responses in invoice will work is that the entire response is saved to something called response. So when I'm referencing it, I want to say response dot places zero. So that's the first place dot ID. And we're going to apply this to the places ID, place ID. Great. And cool. so this should be good to go. Let's go ahead and actually just check if this worked um, by rendering the place ID here, just to make sure that we actually successfully cap we successfully captured it. So now if I run this, I'm going to say, uh, what am I looking for? A tie Toronto, downtown Toronto. And awesome, it was actually able to save the place ID. You can see that it made the call successfully and we should be good to go. If you ever are kind of wondering like what's going on, if you hit debug mode here, it'll show you what's happening behind the scenes. And between debug mode and the variables folder here, you can see everything that's happening and you can see which variables are being filled, which aren't being filled. For example, if this was zero, this means that the API like over here, this section capture response wasn't correct. So we need to then maybe check if we're using the right terminology or we put the zeros in the right place. But if you know the API call is successful, but the variable here was zero, that means that this capture response wasn't working. And if it's confusing, I'd recommend just honestly pasting the entire response into GPT and just saying, how do I reference you know the first place's ID? And it should be able to just give you this as well. So now that we know this works, let's connect these up together and let's see if it works. So let's say, Oops, this started it from the beginning. Let's just start it from here for the restaurant. A Thai restaurant downtown Toronto. And moment of truth. Boom, it works. 
a quick note since we made this video, we made some uploads to voice flow to make it more secure and prevent some vulnerabilities. And so iframes do not render on the canvas. So like you saw in the video, it won't actually pop up. So when you're actually running your test, it'll look a little something like this. A Thai restaurant, downtown LA. And what you're gonna see is it doesn't actually render the iframe, but what you can do is you can just check to make sure that the URL is correct. So if you pull out this drawer here, you'll see a URL um, variable with the URL that you should have filled out. Now, uh, if we go ahead and see how we can actually enable this in our web chat. So now when you're doing this, you want to make sure that you are using your own code and you are not using someone else's. The reason why is that if someone else gives you an iframe that's embedded, with a file that maybe executes some script on your computer, um, they can steal a lot of your information. So you wanna make sure you're using your own code or code that you've personally verified um, within iframes. Now, that's just a general note for anything that you're building, but if you wanna enable the iframe in the chat widget, all you have to do is in our chat widget documents here, you can see that there is a tag called allow dangerous HTML, true. So you just wanna add this into your web chat widget. So if I go back over to voice flow here and let's go ahead and look at our web chat widget code, so back in designer integration, all you want to do is add it uh, right over here uh, is where you want to add that code. So if I go ahead and copy this, um, actually here, I'll just show you how to render this quickly on a page. Uh, and I go to something like google.com. Let's just go ahead and kind of mock embed this. So here is my web chat. And so what I want to do is in the documents, go to web chat widget, I'm going to copy the string here, allow dangerous HTML elements to true. And you'll notice that it's gonna come before those closing tags. So now if I go back to console here, uh, I'm gonna put it right here. I'm just gonna add a comma, do shift enter, paste it in there. And now when this renders, um, it's gonna render with iframe. So if I say something like a uh, good BBQ restaurant in Toronto, you can see here that the iframe actually does render successfully um, and that is all set and good. So, Super powerful, um, really useful uh, as you're building. Uh, you can start to do a bunch of different stuff. We're gonna have more advanced tutorials using different versions of this, but feel free to kind of go ahead and play around. I will just include some of the, the text strings that I put in here in the comments and links to where you can find these APIs. Best of luck and let us know um, if you need any help. You can always hop into our Discord community and someone will be able to help you there. Thanks.